So let's add to our vocabulary and pick up the term event. So an event is a subset of outcomes of the sample space. So where on the previous examples we listed out all possible outcomes of an experiment, now we're gonna kind of narrow our scope into whatever we define an event to be and define all the possible outcomes of that event, okay? So an experiment consists of randomly selecting one digit from a digit table, what is the sample space? So I'm gonna pop back into that that random digit table that we had back in chapter one, this thing, where we were just taking random digits from here. Now, if I take any random digit off of this random digit table, if I take just the one digit, what is the possible outcomes? Well, I'm just gonna start with line 101 because it's here. You see I got a one there, a nine. If I take the next digit, I'm going one digit at a time, then a two, then a two, then a three. And again, I'm taking one digit at a time. But this is the actual outcomes that happened when I went line 101. And I don't have to start you with line 101. So I want you to think, if I picked any line here, and I ask you to pick me one digit, not two, not three, just one digit, what are the possible outcomes? What options are there if you're getting one digit at a time? And you saw up in line 101, the one digit I actually got was the number one. All right, but what are the other possibilities, right? Well, if I started you at line 102, you could have gotten a seven. 103, you could have gotten a four. 104, you could have gotten a five, nine, six, eight, as we head down there. So I want you to start to think, if I'm picking one digit at a time, What's the sample space? What are the list of possible outcomes? Well, I could get a zero, a one, all the way up to nine. Those are our 10, oops, I skipped the number five. Those are our 10 single digit numbers. Okay, if I was picking two digits at a time, I'd have a much larger sample space. I'd actually have 100 numbers in there, or 100 outcomes, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, all the way up to 9, 9. But we're not gonna do two, digit, two digits at a time. We're taking one digit at a time, so there's only 10 options. Great. All right, so now we're gonna pick up a new letter. We're gonna define event A as selecting a number less than six. And what are the outcomes in A? So this is an event, all right? And we'll, we're gonna list the outcomes in the event. So the outcomes in event A have to come from this list. They don't necessarily need, need to be all of them, but they need to come from this list. So this says specifically, select a number less than six. Well, less than six is like saying five or fewer. So let me put this in here. This is five or fewer. It's an alternate way of saying less than six. So let's make a list of the outcomes that are in event A. So in terms of event A, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are the specific outcomes in event A. Okay. So if I went back to, if I started again from line 101 and I picked one digit at a time and that one digit was the number one, that, that line happened to be in event A because one was in event A. If I had started you at 102, you can see the first digit would have been a seven. That was not in event A. All right, that's fine. It can be in there, it cannot be in there. We just gotta be able to answer, is it in there or not? So zero, one, two, three, four, five, in there. Up here, six, seven, eight, nine, not in there. Great. Define event B as selecting a number greater than two and at most three. What are the outcomes in B? All right, greater than two. Let's see if we can do this. This right here would be three or more. And then I wanna deconstruct this at most six. So as we start chapter three and get going with chapter three, four, five, and six, you're gonna hear phrases like at most and at least. So I wanna give us a little context of that. So when you hear the phrase at most, if you wanted to turn that into a math symbol, that would actually be equivalent to less than or equal. So at most six actually means less than or equal to six, okay? And so some folks find it counterintuitive because you hear most, so you think larger, 
but it, it actually doesn't mean larger. So we have at most is equivalent to less than or equal to. And while it wasn't said in this particular problem, I want to talk about the phrase at least. At least is equivalent, that's what these three lines mean, to the symbol greater than or equal to. Okay. So whenever you hear the phrase at least, if you wanted to turn that into a math symbol, you could write greater than or equal to. All right, so we need to be, at least for event B, um, three or more, but less than or equal to six. So greater than or equal to three, but less than or equal to six. So if I want to select a number greater than two and at most six, I can pick three, four, five, or six. All right, because I want the outcomes in B. The outcomes in B are going to come from this list. I just don't know exactly which ones until I get down into it. So if I want to be greater than two, I want to be three or more, but I can't go over six, so three, four, five, six. All right, so we have our sample space, the list of all possible single digit numbers. And then some of these single digit numbers will be in event A, some of these single digit numbers will be in event B. To get into A, you need to be a number less than six or less than or equal to five. To be in event B, you need to be greater than two and at most six. All right, so there's our starting point. Now it's gonna come a bunch of vocab. All right, so let me scoot the page up and then let's get going on all of this vocab. All right, so in terms of the three common vocab terms that get applied in your, your basic probability as we start to unravel all of this, you're gonna hear me refer to not, and, and to or. All right, so let's pick up the not. The event not A consists of all experimental outcomes that are not in event A. So not A is sometimes called the complement of A, and it's usually denoted by A with a superscript of C, or A prime. Your book tends to use A prime. Well, that's great. Most of the stats community uses A with a superscript of C. So you're gonna see me use A with um, the superscript of C more often than A prime. But just be aware of that this is the symbol your book uses. This is the symbol most other stats, uh, stats folks in our stats community use. So we've got not A in here. And actually just so that I can demonstrate this, I'm gonna just scooch this back down so we can get event A in the sample space. I think I can get all of this in the same view screen. So let me just talk about what not A would mean in this, in this case. What's the complement of A? Well, if 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are in A, quite literally, what numbers from the sample space did not make it in there? 6, 7, 8, 9. That's it. So you're either in an event or you're not in an event. 0 through 5 were in it. 6 through 9 were not in it. So we would say 6, 7, 8, and 9 are in A complement. And if I'm going along those lines, 3, 4, 5, 6, we're in B. So 0, 1, 2, 7, 8, 9 are not in B. That's all there is to that, okay? So for every outcome in your sample space, you're either in an event or you're in its complement. It's, again, it's binary. You fit into one of those two. Now, let's get to the or. Um, the or in the stats world is different than the or in our, our real world um, in terms of how we would say it out loud. So the event A or B consists of all experimental outcomes that are in at least one of the two events. That is, they are in event A or in B or in both of these. Um, A or B, sometimes we call it the union of two events. Most books use this symbol, the, ups, um, the large U looking thing. And again, for whatever reason, your book likes to use the, the word or. These are interchangeable, um, but to be consistent with your book, I'll, I'll actually write the word or out loud um, on, on um, exams. Um, now, why this is different from the real world. So let me, let me repeat this. To be in the or, you're either in A or B or both. And it's the or both that's different from the real world. And here's what I mean. Um, when you go to a restaurant, and they ask you, do you want soup or salad? You usually have to pick one of these two. You have to either pick soup or you have to pick salad. If you were at a stats restaurant, you could pick both. So if the menu item said, or menu option said, you can pick soup or salad, you could pick just soup or just salad or both, all right? Soup or salad or both. Now, if you're me, you're gonna pick both, but I don't go to stats restaurants that often, so I have to usually pick one or the other. So that's where, again, our, our common vocabulary on the real world differs from the stats world. All right, 
to be in and, all right, the event A and B consists of all experimental outcomes that are in both. All right, so if you're in both, then you get into the and. If you're in one or the other, or maybe both, you get into the or. So all of the outcomes that are both in event A and event B, A and B is called the intersection of the two events and is also denoted with this upside down U looking symbol. All right, so in terms of the or, this is very inclusive. All right, you tend to have longer lists of outcomes when you write the ors. Or really the word I want us to get is we're gonna combine lists. All right, so when I ask you to write the event space for A or B, you're gonna combine your lists, okay? In terms of the and, it's very exclusive you have shorter lists, sometimes you have nothing in those lists at all, and we're gonna look for the overlap in your lists. So it's very exclusive. You tend to have shorter lists, and I'm gonna put if any, sometimes you don't have anything, if anything. All right, and we're gonna look for the overlap between lists. Okay. So once you get your basic events A and B, we can start to ask you to find the complement, the and, and the or. And then we can actually combine those ideas. I can find you a complement and ask you to or it with a regular event. You'll see what's going on. We have a whole bunch of options we're about to do here. So. Let's take a look at this. The first one, if I scooch this down just a little bit, you're gonna see what are the outcomes that are in A complement. Now we talked about this, but it, it's worth going over again, okay? So if my sample space is all of the numbers between zero and nine, all right, and A has zero, one, two, three, four, five, if I wanna find A complement, and I'm gonna scooch up and down on this paper just so we can make sure everything's in view. If I wanna find A complement, I want you to look at all of the numbers listed here that are not listed here. So if zero through five is listed here and six, seven, eight, nine are not listed in A, they are therefore in A complement. All right, so as I go to do this, what outcomes are in A complement? Well, we're gonna go with six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, by that same rationale, what was in B complement? Well, look at B. B had three, four, five, six. So what is missing from the sample space as we go to event B? Because the sample space had zero through nine. And if three, four, five, six were in B, then zero, one, two, seven, eight, nine were not in B, meaning they were in the complement. That's literally what the complement is. Get me the list of everything from your sample space that didn't make it into event B. That is B complement. So as I write this, We've got 0, 1, 2, and then we're going to go 7, 8, 9. So every outcome that was in your original sample space, so that original list of 10 digits, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, it is either an A or a complement. It'll get divided into one of those two groups. And similarly, it's either in B or B complement. You'll get divided into one of those two groups. Now in terms of A or B, what you wanna do for this one is you wanna combine your lists. So if I look at A or B, I wanna make an overall list of these two events. And I can ignore repeats. So if I look at this, I see zero, one, two, three, four, five. And then if I look at B, I see three, four, five, six. Now three, four, and five are repeats, so I don't actually need to repeat them. I'll just put six, I'll tack that on. So if I wanna combine the lists between A or B, we're gonna go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay? Now the and is different. The and, I wanna look where is the overlap, if there is any. Sometimes there won't be any. So let's take a look at A and B. If I'm going back to A and B, were there any numbers where they overlapped? So zero wasn't in both, one wasn't in both, two wasn't in both, ah, but three was in both, four was in both, five was in both. You can see they have some overlap here. 
So they overlap at three, four, five. Six is not in both, so it doesn't make it into the and. So that's what I'm gonna put into that list. Three, four, and five. Okay, so now let's start to mess with it a little. All right, this is gonna ask you what is A complement or B? And then I'm also gonna ask you what's A complement and B complement. So usually what I tend to do here is if I want A complement or B, I'm gonna write the list of outcomes in A complement and the list of outcomes in B. So let me just do a little legwork here. So we found up here A complement was six, seven, eight, and nine. And if you remember B was um, three, four, five, six. So I'm just gonna take the two events that were given to me all right, I'm gonna write them down just to start it out and I'm gonna think about the or, okay? When I see this word or, I'm gonna to think to myself, I wanna combine these lists, all right? I wanna combine lists if I'm looking at an or. So if I wanna combine them and I wanna write this down, I just want a giant list. I'm gonna go three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can ignore repeats, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Great. Now when it asks me for A complement and B complement, let me write these two individual lists down. So we knew A complement, it was six, seven, eight, nine. And B complement, when we found it, was zero, one, two, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, now I'm gonna think about the word and. All right, and is telling us to find the overlap. So let's see if there was any overlap. Um, six was not in both, uh, seven was in both, eight was in both, nine was in both. Um, one wasn't and two wasn't in both. So I see the overlap is seven, eight, and nine. Oops, I didn't include this seven there. So here we're gonna go seven, eight, and nine. Okay. And just so we can practice this a little more, let me add additional problems over here. So let's say here I wanted A complement and B, and here I wanted A complement or B complement. So I'm gonna take this example and go from or to and, and this example and go from and to or, and I just want you to see what that would look like. So if I see the and, that's great, that means I want to take these two and look if and see if there was any overlap. So it looks like there was overlap at six. And to me, that's it. The only overlap there was at six. Okay. Now let me try and do A complement or B complement. Again, I see the word or, so I want to combine the list. So I'm going to take all of this and just mush it into one list, ignoring repeats. So if I look at it, I've got zero, one, two, then I got to pick up six seven, eight, nine, okay? And if we just kind of take a step back, anytime we had an or, we had a pretty long list, right? Our, everything got longer when we added the ors. The ors tend to have the longer lists and the ands tend to have the smaller lists or the shorter lists, I should say, okay? So there's your look at not, and, and or. One other thing I just want to mention before we get out of here is A and B is the same thing as B and A. So this is the same thing as B and A. It doesn't matter which order I go in. Same deal here. I could have written B or A here, or I could have said B or A complement. So the order doesn't matter. The end, out, or the end list, the outcome list is going to be the same regardless.